All right, it is five o'clock, so I will call the meeting of the Finance and Personnel Committee to order. Uh, we'll begin with the roll call. Alder Feldy? Present. Alder Ackley? Here. Alder Flicky Paneski? Here. Alder Perella? Here. Mitchell is here. We have a full quorum. Will you all please join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And the 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 okay, then barring any objection from the committee, we'll jump over item four, the introduction of committee members and staff. And seeing no objection, we will move on to item five, which is the approval of the minutes from the September 11th meeting. Any discussion on the prior meeting's minutes? I move to accept. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, then seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. That brings us to item number six, which is RO number 135 of 2223, uh, submitting a summons and complaint, small claims in the matter of Christy Murray versus City of Sheboygan, care of Mayor Ryan Sorensen at Al. So this is in front of you for filing. You can file it now, the matter is settled. Uh, just to give you a little bit of detail on this, this was uh, a small claims complaint that was filed. Uh, the, the claimant had filed a claim with the city but had not provided the necessary information and refused to provide that information to us in order to pay it, so instead she sued. We paid exactly the amount that we would have paid had she provided the information. Instead, we provided it to her attorney and it settled and didn't cost us any more than it would have, but it probably did cost her something. Oh dear. Fair enough. Questions or comments on this one? I yep. move to file. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. That brings us to item number seven, which is resolution number 59 of 2324. A resolution authorizing the finance director to sign documents necessary to settle city invoice number 10131 for $6,919.38. Thank you. This item is before you um, for a vehicle had struck a street light and this uh, settlement offer that was given to us from Progressive does cover that full amount to replace the light. Questions, comments on this one? If not, we would be looking for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second then, seeing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. That brings us to item number eight, which is resolution number 61 of 2324, a resolution authorizing the finance director to make all necessary changes and transactions in the city's general ledger to close the cable TV fund and consolidate it into the general fund. Thank you again. This item is brought before you because with discussions with the city's auditors, it was uh, determined that best practice would be to combine the cable TV fund into the general fund. The reason for that being is the main uh, source of revenue in the cable TV fund is a franchise fee that is collected from the state. Every year we take that money, we cover the cable TV uh, expenses and then transfer the rest of it to the general fund. So in essence, it's covering um, general fund expenses already anyways. So in order to uh, follow best practices in the accounting world where you're asking to consolidate it into general fund. Elder Flicky Pinesky. Thank you. Um, I noticed that it, it, there were three different funds, the capital project fund, right at the end of that document. Capital project fund, the IT fund, and the t cable TV fund. Do they all go into general fund now? Sure, so the uh, $517,000 is actually the balance of the cable TV fund as of right now. So we are requesting, um, based on some numbers that were from 2023 budget, we are hoping to fill the gap that was um, in the IT fund for 2023. They did not get an increase during 2023's budget, so we're hoping to give them some fund balance from the cable TV fund to make up that gap. 
but the additional $80,000 is for capital improvement projects for cable TV that are already planned for the next five years. So we're setting aside those funds in the capital projects fund in order to make sure those are paid for. So not only are we bringing, excuse me, can I go keep going? Not only are we bringing money into the general fund, we are now taking cable TV money and giving it to IT? Correct, so that is the request. So when we went through the process for 2023, we had um, a gap that was determined that we needed to fill and uh, the previous administrator had opted to pause the increase that was going to IT. So the thought is to give them additional funds so that they can hopefully have the uh, funds they need for the projects they have, but then also um, then the, the rest of the funds will um, go to the, ca the capital projects fund. No balance is going to the general fund. However, I will say that the operating budget will be covered with the funds that come from that cable TV franchise fee from the state. My goal is to keep the cable TV fund whole and happy and healthy. Will we be doing that by giving money to IT and capital projects? So the capital uh, projects fund will fund those projects that are already planned in the next five years for cable TV by having the cable TV fund pushed into the general fund, you can say that it's covered already with the, the fees that are given to us by the state. So unless you want to keep the cable TV fund a separate fund altogether, it will be consolidated into the general fund. I guess you could say that it's not going to be protected on its own, but as part of the general fund and with the revenue source from the state, you, the plan is to keep it whole within the general fund. And if I could Go ahead. interject on that, I would say how whole it's kept if it rolls into the general fund is going to be more of a matter of policy. So as long as that's what we want as council and that's how the budget looks when the document comes forward and is passed, that is something that we would still be able to maintain with this change. I, if I can also speak for a moment, there was actually discussion with um, the new administrator who's coming on board of actually putting the cable TV fund into the IT fund because they actually are run by the director of IT. Um, but it is a general government function currently. So we did, for accounting purposes, I'm, I guess, suggesting to put it in the general fund. But if it was the option of the council or desire of the council to put it into IT, we could do that as well. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Any other questions or comments on this one? If not, we would be looking for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then, seeing no further discussion. Hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. That brings us to item number nine, which is RC number 218 of 2223. Resolution, or I'm sorry, report of officer number 34 of 2223 by the city clerk submitting a summons and complaint to the matter of Badger State Lofts versus City of Sheboygan. Recommends referring to the Finance and Personnel Committee of the 23 24 year. So I believe we push this forward over sessions. Yes. So this is here for filing as well. Uh, this was uh, litigation filed against the city by Badger State Lofts. Um, that litigation has been successful. The court dismissed one year's worth of the, um, of the allegations uh, and the Badger State Lofts voluntarily dismissed the second year. So uh, it is an entire victory for the city. This is good to hear. Yeah. Questions, comments on this one? Other Flicky Pineski. Thank you. Um, my bottom line was a quarter of a million dollars. We're even. I, I didn't understand. We both won, or we won. We won. Yeah. In, in essence, we won on the on the one year, 
and then they chose not to proceed on the second, the second year. year. Yeah. Thank so the you. first year there was there were two legal arguments we had yeah. for dismissing. The second year there was only one, but they chose not to pursue pursue that issue after the first year got dismissed. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Any other discussion? If not, we would be looking for a motion to file. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, then seeing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. That brings us to item number 10, which was a direct referral of resolution number 62 of 2324, authorizing the finance director slash treasurer to compensate Heather Burke and to rim pay for her service to the city as business manager of the Department of Public Works from March 2023 to August 18th, 2023. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a little background. Since we, the, the, the um, when Don Sokolowski, our former business manager, left the department um, about, a, about a year ago, we have not filled that position in the business office in the Department of Public Works. Heather has been filling, fulfilling that role uh, excellently for the department as a matter of fact, she's just recently accepted the role now as a full-time position as a promotion. But in, in an effort to recognize her uh, great contributions to the department and fulfilling kind of a dual role, her existing role of a clerk and and uh, special events uh, operations and coordination, as well as the business manager functions during this absence until it was uh, fully, fully recognized. Uh, we, we decided to come in and ask for at least the opportunity to recognize her for this contributions for her last six months as is provided. Uh, due to a lack of an administrator and uh, due to the timing, it, I felt it was best that to recognize Heather earlier here for her contributions come to the committee. Just to give you an example, uh, she was very instrumental uh, taking on uh, a software implementation role of HeyGov for the Department of Public Works. And it will allow us to go online with all of our park reservations. Um, it's happening next week, as a matter of fact. Next week is our park day, it's, it's ready to go. She was in instrumental in that, as well as working with the clerk's office, the IT department, finance department, she really stepped up. So uh, just looking for an, uh, your support on this this evening, and I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions on this one? Alder Perel. Yes, so what is the total that we are going, what is the total amount that we are going to compensate Heather with for it's, these six months? It, in the, it's in the resolution, I believe it's $2,733.12. Okay. I wanted to make sure that was the one. Thank yep. you. Any other questions or comments? If not, I will just quickly say thank you to Heather for stepping up and going above and beyond wearing mm -hmm two hats for an extended period of time. Imagine that was not always easy, so thank you. And if there is no further discussion, I would ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second then. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed, chair votes aye, the ayes have it, the motion passes. Our next regular meeting is scheduled for October 9th. And with that, we have exhausted our agenda and are looking for a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Still no discussion on adjournment. All in favor? Aye. aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. We are adjourned. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. Thank you. My, my other computer.